Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, my name is Dr. Shana Keller. I'm a naturopathic doctor and today we're going to be talking about intuition. This knowing without knowing, like what is this? Um, we're going to be talking about the definition of intuition so we're kind of on the same page from our perspective what we're talking to, to, to or speaking about. The science of intuition and we're keeping this loose because there's lots of different flavors of what science is um, and intuition is a skill and also trusting your own intuition. So my my special guest today is Tia Lavoy who I met here in Montrose when she was giving like some meditation series little tacks on like life is interesting like what do you think kind of thing so I'll let Tia introduce herself. Thank you. It's really good to be here. Um, yeah so I have been helping people for the last 21 years tap into their creative potential. And part of that is using indigenous wisdom, uh, <laughs> using indigenous wisdom and helping people realize their creative power in life. That they don't have to continue suffering, that they can find their purpose, that they can live that purpose, they can heal themselves physically. All the, the magical things that today we call miracles, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I've been sharing with people. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and Appreciate you. One of the things that was most inspiring about that talk I ended up going to unintentionally, but it was like, <laughs> you know, the right thing for my soul at that moment, was there was a woman that was there. Um, is it all right if I share this? Yeah, you go for it. She hadn't walked in, I don't know how long, but a long time. Yeah. And she was standing. Yeah. And... <laughs> Those are the type of things it, why I got into medicine. Because yeah. I want to see crazy miracles like that happen. <laughs> yep. People trusting themselves and not just listening to the conventional medical establishment. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, things aren't, things aren't always possible, but like I believe everything is potentially possible yeah. if we allow it to be possible. Sure. Uh, you know, that's interesting because that woman that you're talking about in particular, um, you know, the power of the mind is so incredibly crazy and that's where you get to find those crazy miracles. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have these conditions that they're not the ones, they can't do it. It's not, it's not my story. I, I hear all these great, wonderful, miraculous stories. People heal themselves and do all the things that we consider impossible, but that's not my story. Mm. And then I always wonder like, why do you say that's not your story? If her story crossed your path, then that's, you one step closer to your good news story. 100%. Yep. And so I, I believe in that. I believe absolutely in alignment. I, um, I used to believe in attraction and manifestation. Mm. We're manifesting something. And now, like seeing this world in frequency and vibration, it's more so what are you aligning to? Mm -hmm. there's, a, um, there's a really good uh, creation story by the Coptics, the, the Kemet's ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the story is, because you know how like, you have all these beginning stories in the world that say like, in the beginning there was a God or gods and they tried to make man and you know, they made him out of mud and he melted or they made him <laughs> out of water and he wasn't in form and all these things they try to do, they make the thing first. The thing that I really love about miracle making, and we have seen plenty, is that it's an alignment to a specific frequency. Mm. Now frequency is just a, a consistent vibration. And so if you can align, you can align to anything, so you have to raise your vibration. So in this comedic story, in this, this creation story, they say that the architect of the universe, his name was Pita, the architect of the universe walked through essence okay. before there was any form he walked through the world of essence and he called the names of things. Mm -hmm. And because he called the names of things, they took form from that vibration, uh -huh. that word, that mm -hmm. name. Uh huh. I love that. That's, that's about the coolest one. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, we've got these tables and yeah, they're nothing special, like Ikea tables, right? Huh? But they're still created from another human being. So there's still a vibration of creation everything. in literally everything. Everything. One of my indigenous teachers who has since passed. Um, yeah, the traveler. Yep. He uh, reminded me that everything has vibration. Mm -hmm. Even the things that we claim mm -hmm. are not or what, what was it? stationary. Mm -hmm. Everything has a vibration. Everything has a place of orientation and respect. Mm -hmm. The rocks in the in the river, the rocks on the bank, the road, everything. Mm -hmm. And when we think about it from, the, well, at least when I think about it from those perspectives, it reminds me that there is so many different orientations to the world. Sure. 
Absolutely. Well, and also the worlds inside of worlds inside of worlds mm -hmm. that we live in. So many people we're taught in this world, you know, you have to be logical. You have to be reasoning. You have mm -hmm. to have a reasoning mind. You have to have a lot of left brain thinking. I'm, I'm of the mind, let's meld them. Let's integrate both of them. Let's see what we can do. So we're taught, you know, that's not logical. This, this makes no sense. We say that, right? Mm -hmm. This makes no sense. Right. And you wanting to talk about intuition today, that the senses are part of all of that. Mm -hmm. And so we're raised in this world where it's supposed to be reason and logic and that's what rules it. But there's also worlds beyond that one. And I think in a lot of the indigenous teachings, what we're taught about, you know, there are seven worlds or four worlds or even the Incans say, you know, we have three worlds. We have, um, we have the above world, the here world, and the inner world. Mm -hmm. And some people will say we have an underworld or whatever. And mm -hmm. What's really beautiful about all of that is that they say now, a lot of the prophecies say that like this window of time that we're in right now says that we're opening the doorway to the next world or a new world or the fourth world or whatever it is. And the Incans say that this fourth world is called Terra Pai Pacha. Now, how many people in this world do you know are starting to work on themselves? They're starting to see things. They're starting to decide, you know, just because I'm being told by a white lab coat that this is the way my life will be, doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Mm -hmm. So Terra Pai Pacha literally means um, the world for meeting ourselves. Mm. So the fact that more and more people are waking up every day and they're deciding like, I gotta, it's gotta be something else. It's gotta go deeper than this. Yeah. It's, we're in Terra Pai Pacha right now. Like it's yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that makes my job really challenging is when it's clear to me that someone needs to divorce their spouse, quit their job, move to a different country, leave their family of origin, something really <laughs> big and hard. And yep. what do we do? Antidepressants. Antidepressants for everyone. Mm -hmm. So you can't and actually make that hard decision that needs to happen. And you know it needs to happen, but it's hard to make. It's mm -hmm. hard. Those are hard things. Mm -hmm. And at some point, that person will create enough discomfort, mm -hmm. enough pain, enough deadening or numbing or whatever they want to call it, that their situation will have to give way to something new arising in it. Um, in quantum physics, they call it uh, an emergent property. Mm. Emergent property is when you have two things come together and then something of those two things, but completely different from it, is also born from it. So a baby is the most perfect emergent property. Yeah. And so they will, they will take their antidepressants or they'll take whatever it is that they'll take. And eventually at some point they'll get tired of or they'll get pain filled enough or uncomfortable enough that something else will change. Yeah. So, you know, I hear you in the frustration of being able to see somebody do a thing. <sighs> this is what I tell myself. They're on their journey. Yeah. They're getting their lessons and I wish them the absolute best in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yep. And I'd like share that frustration, but also know that it's not my path. And that's exactly sure. what you're saying. You're it's here like, to help people. I wanna help, I wanna help guide and support through this process. And you do a great job at it. And you do too. Hey, thank like, you. Like that's what's great about like working <laughs> with that. and seeing other people that are helping others. Yeah. Like, helping there's, there's nothing like meeting someone and they say, uh, yeah, you know, I've got six months to live. And they say that, and you're like, well, do you want, do you want to die? Right. Like, is that, what? well, but so-and-so told me, right. and the numbers say this, and it's like, well, I get that. And that's a frequency that you're in right now, but we yeah. can change that frequency. And then you give them a protocol, and they start following the protocol, and give them a timeline. They start looking at their traumas, because that's what, mm -hmm. that's where you have to go with it. And you, when you work through the traumas, and you see the messengers, then mm -hmm. you make changes with the message, and... Pretty soon, six months has passed, and then a year's passed, and two years, and they're still here, and they're like, well, maybe I am one of those wonderful medical anomaly miracles. Yep. And oh, like, misdiagnosis. Mm -hmm. We oh, weren't yes. actually diagnosed with that. Um, yes, We were just, just kidding. incorrectly diagnosing. That's my favorite. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, Louise Hay is a good example of this because Excellent. her work, she was diagnosed, I can't remember, in her early 20s, I think, with like a really aggressive form of cancer. Mm -hmm. And they gave her a very short period of time. And she just died a few years ago in her late 90s. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, talk about changing frequencies. I mean, she lived 70 years longer than mm -hmm. they thought she would. Well, and her whole thing was affirmations, yeah. right? She's all about affirmations. And yeah. I think that's super important. But beyond just giving yourself an affirmation, it's super important to make sure that 
when you get up from that altar or that meditation in the morning where you've just looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you know, I am this, I am love, I'm priceless, I'm perfect, whatever it is you say, then to also make sure that you walk through your day with that awareness yeah. and you make sure that every word that you speak and every thought that you allow in your mind and every action that you take is towards the cultivation of whatever that affirmation was. Mm -hmm. You can't say, you know, I'm love and priceless and fearless and beautiful mm -hmm. and then turn around and not want to see your reflection in your day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a hard one, isn't it, for yeah. people? I love myself. I am beautiful. And look in the mirror and say it. I, We've, I've yep. met dozens of people that cannot do it. Uh -huh. They cannot look at themselves in the mirror without thinking awful things about themselves. Well, that's why they cross paths with someone like you. Yeah. And then you walk them up to it and then they get through it. Um, it's like when I have, when I have, I'm doing a mentorship and I always tell someone in a mentorship, hey, like anytime that you feel yourself going into a meltdown, call me. Mm. And they'll say, well, I don't want to bother you. And I say, I get it, but I have a different kind of work. So it's okay. Yeah. And I'll say, call me. And they'll say, well, why do you want to see me in my meltdown? And I say, well, because I'm going to show you how to work through that meltdown. Mm -hmm. And so how to work through that meltdown, you got to be in one in order for me to walk you through it. Yeah. And so we do it a couple of times and they get it. And now they have a new coping mechanism. Building They're no longer strength. in survival mode. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting where this is going. Thanks, yeah. Shana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's define intuition for our listeners. Huh? From my perspective, it's the knowing without knowing. It's an unconscious process. And we've already been kind of talking about it. It's so funny, like a macrocosm, a microcosm there. They are reflections of each other. And that is very much how I think about intuition. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, I absolutely believe the outside reflects the inside for anything. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? The knowing without knowing. Knowing without knowing. I, I feel that. And also, can I just add to that? Knowing without knowing that you know. Yeah. Because it's coming to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're feeling it for a reason. And that, that we were talking about with the senses earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, we're told seeing and hearing and tasting and smelling, all the things. But before any of that, we feel. We feel. Mm -hmm. That feeling is intuition. That mm -hmm. feeling is, hey, you know... Regardless of the conditions that you're living by currently in your world, there is a something inside of you that doesn't have to prove anything, doesn't have anything to defend, doesn't have anything to be afraid of, and so it's going to speak. I mm -hmm. think intuition is consciousness. It's our consciousness coming through. And that consciousness that connects us to everybody else and ultimately every other thing on this planet. Right. The, yeah. It's like uh, I, I found myself when I was prepping for this onto the Noetic, Noetic Institute. Are you familiar? Mm -hmm. Really interesting. And it was good to get reminded of it because it's been a while. Um, but their whole thing is, is like bringing these concepts, these mystic concepts, and showing that there is scientific evidence that supports these things being very real Absolutely. and true. And I love that. And not everything we need to logic, logic our way through, but it's nice when it's like, hey, you want to talk smack about intuition not being something that's a viable thing in a clinical practice? Mm -hmm. it turns out it really very much is. Mm -hmm. It will. And also... Like we have branches of science, quantum physics, mm -hmm. uh, that unfolded to try and disprove what mystics have been saying for millennia. <laughs> and when they started looking, they started saying, whoa, like there really is some truth in this. Yeah. Let's go deeper. And mm -hmm. so now we have instruments given to us by science telling us what we've already seen around the medicine fires and yeah. All for, that good for stuff. eons, for before science yep. was even a thought. One of my professors actually calls the scientific method, um, oh, dare I say this, uh, white privilege. Because it very much is, where did the scientific method originate? In Europe. Mm -hmm. And so then if we can't put it into this confines of the scientific method, which has been unfortunately bastardized in the last few years, um, you know, we are actually dismissing a lot of people's experiences from uh, indigenous wisdom around the world. Mm -hmm hundreds of thousands of years, eons, forever, since the beginning of time. There is a reason why our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents knew to do things that in this day and age we don't, not a lot of us know about. It literally took two generations to completely disconnect us from ourselves. How do you tame a fox? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah take it away from its 
with <laughs> away from its people, and that's very much what has happened. <laughs> yep. And the United States right now, we have the highest rates of anxiety and depression. We are also the most medicated on psychiatric medications we've ever been on mm -hmm. in history. Do you know why, though? Like, do you know why we're the kind the America, right? America, you know yeah. why America is the one that's so highly medicated, anxiety ridden, depressed. Think about this. Think about this country. It's the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes in the great hero stories, right? We have a very reluctant hero. We can look at this day and age. We can look at Neo in the Matrix, right? right. Neo doesn't want to be the one. We can look back at medieval folklore. We can look back at indigenous stories. We can look back at creation myths. We always have a reluctant hero. We are called Great, great America, Great Turtle Island. It's called United States of America. United States, like a United State of being. Mm. So if we are the reluctant hero of the story, of course we're gonna have to grow, grow and go through the most horrible of the things that are mm -hmm. happening for our, our mental capacities mm -hmm. and our mental awareness. Yeah. So United States of America, yeah, why are we so overly medicated? Because that's the, that's the swing for when eventually enough people reach a tipping point that yeah. they decide they need something better. Yeah. There's got to be more to this. I need to leave a greater legacy than what's going on with me right now. Yeah. And so here they are. And, and we'll, break, we'll break out of it, Shana. I think we no will, too. We're doing I, it. I believe it's it. Happening. My experience with psychiatric medications are very personal. Mm -hmm. And those that I have had the privilege of speaking to about it, when they come to their realization on psychiatric meds, which have some of the worst side effect profile of any of the medications I've ever seen, including cancer medications. For sure people like snap out of it. They're like, I just had the most ridiculous prophetic experience of my life. I will not be doing that again. Yeah. And so it really is a turning point. And like, I see psychiatric medications like shifting people and like waking them up, if mm -hmm. you will, to maybe there has to be something better. There has to be a different way. This can't be the only way. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's the way for that one. Exactly. And the way for that one. I th I'm, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. I think that the human experience itself, like we're always given all of these little messages in front of us on our journey. And it's up to us whether we choose to see them and that's based on intuition. Yeah. And so there we go again. So as you grow in your intuition, you get to see more and more of the messages, but in order to grow in your intuition, you've got to pay attention to the messages and recognize them when they show up. Right, exactly. Whether that's prescription, that's whether that's a journey into prescription, you know, profile or whatever, or meditation, yoga, whatever, but it'll get you where you need to be. It I will. think everyone has this mentality of like, I'm not there yet, or I got to be there, or one day I'll be <laughs> there, I'll never be there. And really there comes from the here. So even when you're trying to get there, you're, you're right here, you're already there. You, you're already here and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's part of the process, <laughs> the unfolding, exactly. You know? um, okay, so senses. Fine. Senses help us with intuition. They help us sense our environment. Mm -hmm. But it's this unknowing without knowing, but we know it. It's we like, do. It's so crazy. And it's, it's already like inside of you. Connecting to the universal consciousness is the way I think about it. And that's like kind of a heady thing for a lot of people to conceptualize if they haven't you know, started looking down that path. I had a really great teacher named Patrick Collard. He passed in 09. And after he passed, I didn't know what to do with my life. Like I had no idea. And I ended up going on this walkabout. I ended up on the Diné reservation, the Navajo reservation for four years. I learned their medicine songs and got some really great experiences. If I hadn't have gone through the things I had gone through leading up to that walkabout, then I wouldn't be who I am in front of you right now, right? That's but life. where would it have taken me? Mm -hmm. What would I have gotten into? Would I have gone back to Telluride and just been a faux painter my whole life and been familiar and complacent and content with that? I don't think so. But I had to have something happen. I had to have a series of events happen where there was some kind of pressurization. We all go through that in life. We sure do. And so, you know, when we're looking at intuition, and we say we don't know, and you said something, you said it connects us to universal consciousness. Universal, 
universe, so one song, one song, one tone, one vibration, one frequency. And from that, you have all of these, these little minors that show up that ultimately grow into majors. So you saying the universal consciousness, I say that universal, that, that one song inside of all of us. Mm -hmm. The universe out here, what I learned from Patrick Collard was that everything out here is a 360 degree reflection of your own, of you, just mm -hmm. you. You're looking back at you, everything you see, every person that you judge, you're just judging yourself. Everything that you're worried about out here, it's some aspect of something that's happened to you at some point in your life, in your past. And it's really interesting when people sit down and start looking at their stories and then they start seeing that, oh, it wasn't just this horrible trauma that happened to me. It was an initiation for me to grow in my courage or finding my voice or communication or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The silver lining. And, yeah. you know, sometimes it's hard when you're going through the the middle of it to see that <laughs> silver lining. Yeah. But yeah. when you can kind of start seeing the light and like, okay, there's a way through, like I'm seeing way through the truck, the, you know, mm -hmm. quicksilver, quicksand is not like a big deal to kids now, but when I was growing up, it was like the death. <laughs> yes. And like, you know, you're waist up in quicksand, uh -huh. working through it one small movement at a time. And then there's like, okay, look, I'm starting to come up out of the quicksand. Mm -hmm. Now what? So, mm -hmm. so when you're in the middle of the mud, is there like a bit of intuition that's kind of helping guide you? Because when I've been through some crap, I don't always see the end of it. Mm -hmm. And then it's but like, what do you it, do? You put one foot in front of exactly, the other. Exactly. One at a time. Take a breath. One at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's it. You know, the first thing for anything, no matter how dark it seems. Mm -hmm. And when people show up and they say, I say, you know, what's going on with you? Tell me about your life currently. And they say, well, I've been depressed. I've been depressed for 11 years, seven years, three years. I'm in depression right now. And I say, okay. And I say, well, what's depression feel like? Well, I feel numb. I always remind them, even that numb feeling is a feeling. It's and a when shame. you tell them, when you, when you say like, hey, do you realize that numb feeling is still a feeling? Numb has become this really interesting user-friendly pharmaceutical word. Are you numb? Do you feel numb? Right. Is there numbing? It's become so user-friendly that people just throw it around without remembering that it's still a feeling. If you're feeling numb, you're still feeling. Right. And so I learned a thing from Patrick where there's life, there's hope. And so as long as you're still alive and breathing, then you've still got hope. And one of the first ways to start seeing that light is close your eyes and look up at your third eye. Third eye, you know, half inch above, look up with your eyes closed. Look right here at this place with your eyes closed and immediately start thinking about a word that helps you. For me, the word is love. I just think about it, you know, I, I light it up in flames behind my eyes. Some people it's hope, some people it's grateful, some people it's grace, some people it's God, yeah. you know, and so, Anything to break up the rhythm of the reaction that your body is going through when you're remembering whatever this condition is that's being brought up for you right now will help you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I think about depression, I think about the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. And the vagus nerve has three branches, yes. the dorsal vagal, the ventral vagal, and then the, va the part of the vagus nerve that allows you and I right now to be conversing. Mm -hmm. The dorsal vagal is our oldest. It's the one we share with our lizard friends. <laughs> and that's our, that's our limbic system. That's uh -huh. our, oh my God, I'm just going to die. I'm just going to lay down and pretend to be dead. Yeah, but which also, if we're so reptilian complex, so we also have pineal and pituitary uh -huh. in there, which are, which is, that's the mystical part of our brain. Mm -hmm. So even our reptilian brain, that's where the magic is. That's where the, fills up with cerebral spinal fluid. Anytime we have a desire, goes down the spinal column, does its thing, look mm -hmm. up Christ oil or whatever you want to see about it. But that does a thing. So yeah. yes, limbic system. Limbic system. So then the ventral vagus is those people that get stuck in more of like the anxious, obsessive, mm -hmm. da -da -da -da, mm -hmm. run around like a crazy person. Yeah. I'd remind those people that there was a study done with monkeys. They removed all the anxious monkeys and guess what happened to all the monkeys? <laughs> they all died. <laughs> so everybody has a place. Mm -hmm. We need people that are in deep rest 
-hmm. so that they can we can see that we can slow down and it's okay mm -hmm. and those of us that turns more towards the anxious we keep the rest of society also kind of like on our toes mm -hmm. and then there's the part of our brain or part of our vagus nerve that I'm forgetting the specific scientific terminology but whatever we do the best we can that's okay and that's where we are socializing we feel safe enough to socialize mm -hmm. and converse we see dogs my dogs when you guys came in they were playing mm -hmm. like that's part of the like socializing aspect of our vagus nerve mm -hmm. The other piece tied into our intuition. Tied into our intuition. So the vagus nerve is the only cranial nerve that leaves our head, and eighty percent of those va of those nerve fibers travel from the gut to the brain. Eighty percent of them. So it, yes, it's in our brain. It originates in our brain, but it actually listens to the messages here in our gut mm -hmm. to tell our brain, are we safe? Are we okay? Can we eat? Do we need to run from the saber-toothed tiger? What do we need to do in this moment? Uh -huh. Those gut feelings. And right before we started, I was like, I don't think that the gut is our second brain. It's our first brain. I'm right there with you. Mm -hmm. and, and this whole like this hierarchy in science of like which part of the body is more important, I think they're all very important. They all have their own flavors. Synergy. They all work together. Exactly. Yeah. Without one, we have none. Right there with you on that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you talk about gut to brain and I think all oh, solar plexus to crown chakra, like mm -hmm. what, are the, what are all these places in between? Mm -hmm. Your intuition is what tells you it's okay to sit, it's okay to have this conversation, it's okay not to get on this elevator, it's okay right. to not partake in this activity, it's okay to hang out over here and have a barbecue. I um, That's something that people have really created a big challenge for themselves because we're we're literally raised on these conditions to not trust our gut yep to pay attention to the expert yep exactly yeah yep and that's a major problem because i think it's contributing to no one trusting themselves and is constantly outsourcing sure outsourcing to the government outsourcing to the doctor wearing the white coat outsourcing to we give our gurus. faith Mm -hmm. Ram Dass talks a lot about this. Like I had to go all the way to Indonesia to figure out that actually I just need to be right here at my house. Right? It's just like we think it's all these big things and it's right where we are. Yeah. The, the, well, the, the right where we are uh -huh. is the big thing. The right where we are, that's where we access our superpowers. That's where our presence is. The, that, the thing, I mean, you just said it. Like the big thing, the little thing, it's the thing. It's mm -hmm. this is you, what you realize in every moment, every experience that you have, like that's the big thing. In this moment, what's happening right here is the big thing. And in the next moment, and when we get up from here and we go have our day, that's the big thing. Mm -hmm. That's the presence of everything. You can train yourself to be present by taking advantage of your technology, of your little computer phone. And you set alarms at different hours on varying days and then, and then tag it, are you present? Or what are you thinking of in this moment? Or what am I creating in this breath? Mm -hmm. And if you do that and you pay attention when the alarm shows up and you actually follow through with it, you will grow in your presence, your ability to create your own miracles, all the good things that, that mm -hmm. you're here for, Shayna. And what's really fascinating about this particular like mindfulness uh -huh. and then speaking to like that ventral vagal experience of being a little more anxious, mm -hmm. I see a lot of people with stomach issues. Mm -hmm. The stomach oh, pertains totally. to the anxiety and the opposite emotion of that is mindfulness. Uh -huh. And how, you know what I, I was just listening to a podcast and the lady said like 300 and something times a day we pick up our phone. That's a lot of picking up the phone mm -hmm. and I do it too. I'm mm -hmm. guilty of it. I, my <laughs> life is run by technology. Work. Yeah. And I to, understand. to speak to what you're just saying is like, put little reminders in your calendar to take a breath. We do 25,000 breaths a day. How many of those are intentional? Right. Very few for most people. Yeah. Some less for others that are breath holders. Yeah. And like the cause that that has on our physiology. Mm -hmm. the number, what do they say in a panic? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because what are they not doing? Yeah breathing or they've taken a big oh we know that blonde in the scary movie is going to get killed and what do we do anyway mm -hmm. and then hold our breath mm -hmm. and never let it go what do we do when we feel pressure what do we do when we think about not being able to pay rent right. not being able to pay for our children not being able to do hmm? tense 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 mm -hmm. and then we can't breathe and, and then the vagus hurts. nerve is like i don't even know what to do anymore i'm Help. not safe uh-huh right Better go get an antidepressant. Uh huh. And now my anxiety. Now, now we're adrenalizing everything. So now right. my adrenal glands are famished. Now it's we're out. It's kaput. Like, mm -hmm. what do we do? 
breath work breath work is so integral to good well-being being yeah. mindful in your day making the things that you want to make it's um you know you were talking too about energy on things so there's some videos going around and there's a piece of aluminum foil you can move that aluminum foil with the energy of you so in our reasoning mind when they say like oh that's just the wind well no you can do it a lot and it's not going to move the way that you'll move it if you if you utilize your energy your chi your fire inside of you and your intuition are are intertwined are mm -hmm. closely interconnected in that yeah. And so just making sure that you do things to keep that fire going and that fire growing inside of you is really important as well mm -hmm. for your intuition, for your, your buildup of intuition. And so the Chinese medicine, they say qigong, mm -hmm. and that's to help things be moving and flowing. Mm -hmm. And we just gave several examples of the things that make us not move and mm -hmm. not allow ourselves Absolutely. to flow appropriately and qigong has some fantastic research for you know we have cardiovascular disease at all-time highs in this country mm -hmm. it is one of the best treatments for high blood pressure and it works far better than any of these I, uh, hypertension medications that I find it prescribe. super helpful for find for helping people build their confidence and their intuition by yeah. being able to feel and see mm -hmm. what their energetic flow can actually do yeah yeah I'm a huge I practice it almost daily and I I am, I appreciate Qigong and what it can do for mm -hmm. people. Yep. I go through different phases of practices. I kind of try different things. And the <laughs> thing that's been most helpful for me is yoga, actually. Mm -hmm. And I don't spend a lot of time talking about yoga. Most people don't even know this about me because I feel like, and I'm kind of getting off on a different tangent here. All right. The Sounds spiritual fine. community can be very interesting, I'll say. Okay. And... Uh, the yoga community in the United States, I feel like, has really bastardized it. That's apparently a good word I like. Um, and I want the philosophy to be in things because that's what helps me be mm -hmm. more grounded and more mindful. Mm -hmm. So I have a strong home practice nice. that I use. And I read many, I have read many books. I really love the um, Light on Yoga is one of my favorite, like, philosophy uh, written by a PhD who studied yoga, went to India. You know, obviously going to India is something that's been very in, uh, important to me. I haven't had the, I haven't made time for it at this, All right. at this juncture. You know that you deserve? Oh yeah. All right then. Absolutely. You'll do it then. Oh, it will happen. As long as you know in that you right deserve time. it, you'll yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah. Value. Value and intuition are entwined. Mm -hmm. Courage and intuition are entwined. Faith and intuition are entwined. Grace and intuition are entwined. Let's talk a little bit more about, about value and intuition. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. In order to trust your intuition, You've got to, in order to trust you, which is where your intuition is coming from, you've got to know that you're deserving to hear your intuition. You've got to know that you're deserving to feel or sense your intuition. If you go through life afraid, just inspired by fear on a daily basis, mm -hmm. and most people are, if you judged today, at least one time in that judgment, you were inspired in fear. So think about how many times you've judged yourself, somebody else, what's going on in the world today. That's you judging yourself. So knowing that you're worth it, knowing that I am worthy to build up my intuition. I know that I am worthy to receive the messages that my intuition gives me. The more that you do that, the more you'll be given opportunities by your environment, the universe, whatever you want to call it, the more that will offer you opportunities to step into that intuition. Anytime you make a declaration, anytime that you say like, I, I, uh, I want to become more patient, <laughs> right? I want more patience. What you ask oh for. man, it's great, but you just got to recognize the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So usually people will say, T, I want more patience. I want to grow on my patience. I say, okay, cool. It is almost every time within a week, I'll get a text or a phone call from this person and they'll be stuck in traffic. And it's like, what's happening? And they say, uh, I'm stuck in traffic. I can't believe. I said, what did you declare the last time we sat down and had a session? I want more patience. <laughs> well, look where you are. Like the, he, you are being gifted this really great opportunity to grow in your patience. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I want to grow in my intuition, trust that you'll be given opportunities to grow in that intuition. Universe, the life always reflects back to us the great aha moment that we just got. So if you have an aha moment, you have this great realization, it's super important to remember that in the next following moments, you're going to be given an opportunity to apply mm -hmm. this lesson in aha moments. Because mm -hmm. if you don't apply what you just learned in the previous aha moment, 
what happens is you start committing to a cycle and then you go through a cycle and then it has to become painful enough for you to make the change. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing you say though is you have to value yourself. Absolutely. This organism, this finite being that we are, our soul <laughs> is cast into in this life. Yes. We have to value it. Absolutely. One of the things I really, one of the things I resonate most about Ram Dass's work is he has a little, little blurb on trees. Okay. You walk in the forest. You look at the trees and you're like, oh my God, look at that one. It kind of fell down and then curved up. And look at how fat that one is. Look how the bark is on that one. Look how thin and like, oh, it's branching in all these ways. We don't look at humans the way we look at trees in mm -hmm. awe and curiosity. Mm -hmm. We judge ourselves. We compare ourselves to others. We compare ourselves to celebrities. We want plastic surgery. Oh like, my goodness. All of these things. How many medi spas are there in Montrose? Montrose is 20,000 people. <laughs> Montrose, what are you doing? <laughs> mm hmm well, it's mm -hmm. like we, we want the vanity. We have idealized youth. Well, we want the vanity because we've been conditioned to believe yes. that this is what is valuable. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Youth is valuable. Conditioning. Con condition, the word condition, uh, originates from to make an agreement with something. Ooh. Uh-huh. So Ooh. we've accepted this. Marinate on that. We've yep. accepted that this is what is true and appropriate. And then as we age, our gray hairs must be covered up. Our wrinkles must be sure. filled. Think about think oh. about your psychological conditions. Right. Think about like whatever has ever given value to you that you aren't good enough. That you aren't good enough because right. that's the great human condition. We're not good enough. I'm not good enough. I see people who show up with uh, incurable diseases. I see people who show up who are ready for a divorce, who are ready to get married, who are ready to have a child, who have been through a serious wreck and told they'll never walk again and they yeah. want to walk again. I see all those kinds of people. I see people who feel disconnected from source. I see people who feel like they have no purpose in life, but they keep getting an intuitive hit that tells them there's something they got to keep going. No matter what the condition is of any of those people, it always comes back to not good enough. Mm. The condition itself always comes back to not good enough. I stayed in the relationship because I thought this was the only person that would have me. I stayed in the job because I needed security. I right. did this, I did that. Mm -hmm. Now I have a disease and so now I gotta work through that and totally neutralize that because I believe in the power of words. But yeah. yeah, that's no matter what the condition is, the the physical something that the person is going through, always and always, I've never not seen it like that. It yeah. always goes back to not good enough value, self-worth. Yeah. The really beautiful thing about that and what makes it super simple is that if you know that every issue that somebody shows up with always comes back to value, then that's where you implement it. Mm -hmm. Somebody shows up and they wanna quit smoking cigarettes. It's never about me getting them to stop smoking cigarettes. It's about helping them raise their value so yes. that they can be out of that vibration of whatever cigarettes represents for them and they're moving into something even greater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do that with value. Exactly. <laughs> Love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> the, this brings up, um, I can't remember the name of the book. Are you familiar with Dr. Gabor Mate? I am. I love his work yeah. so much. He and is an interesting little alien. That is for sure. He's great. He, he's an interesting <laughs> man for sure. He, there was a story that reminded me um, about what you were just saying. And a woman was working for the Canadian uh, version of the IRS. Okay. Sounds terrible. She stayed in this job forever <laughs> mm -hmm. until she got, I think it was like cancer or something, mm -hmm. like a really serious illness. And then she was like, oh, now I can leave. Like I knew I needed to leave that job 20 years ago, but you know. Mm -hmm. I just, whatever. <laughs> we wait for our conditions. Yep. We bring those conditions about. We yep. do that. Yep. Frequency is really interesting. She knew and she chose to stay because it was the easier thing to do. And now she's sick enough. Oh, now I can leave. Mm -hmm. This gives me a reason to leave. This terrible job that I hate people yelling at me on the phone. But it pays the bills, so it's fine, right? Right. She Value. Knew. If Value. she valued herself more, yeah. she would have left when she felt the thing told her, when her intuition popped up and said, hey girl, get out of here. So let's talk a little bit about building intuition. And we've been talking about it without specifically, mm -hmm. you know, orienting ourselves to it. It's almost like building muscle. Absolutely, it you, is. You lift that weight one day and it's really hard. And then before you know it, you're at a 20 pound weight that you, right. and then you're like, oh man, I'm like really trusting myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so tell me a little so, bit about how you see people build that intuition. So being mindful, getting yourself in a present state, 
And by doing that, you have to remind yourself consistently that you're worthy. Mm. We used to um, we used to do these workshops and there would be women standing in front of a mirror and they would say, I'm love, I'm priceless, I'm fearless, I'm beautiful. All is happening in perfection and I choose love. They could say I'm love. They could say it because, you know, their favorite movie star says it when she gives a positive affirmation on her IG or whatever. Right. Um, they can say priceless. So sometimes there'd be some faltering and priceless because you're taking it back to value. And we have a thing about receiving compliments. We have a thing about being afraid to receive compliments because then that means we'll receive insults. And then that means if they can bring us up, they can tear <laughs> us down. We have all these little conditions set in place, these little booby traps to keep us where we're like, whoa, okay. All right. Let me, okay. I'm going to navigate this. It always helps you. I think uh, one of the greatest things I ever learned from Patrick was that everything is good for you. Mm -hmm. I don't mean starting a heroin addiction or anything like that. <laughs> but when you find yourself in something, you know, when something's happening in your world and it's really a test, it's really a challenge. It's something that you just feel overwhelmed and it's hard. Okay, what's the good in this? Mm -hmm. What is this refining me into? My teacher taught spiritual alchemy, and one of the biggest parts of the spiritual alchemy is when you heat things up enough that you can knock the burrs off or anything sharp, that's your refinement. You're making it smooth and polished where everything works smoothly together. And so mm -hmm. that one, how do you build your intuition? You work on your value. From your value, you start to connect to your presence. From your presence, you start to work in your awareness of the belief systems that you have because I honestly believe that the one truth in this world is that everyone is living by their own truth mm. and maybe a majority of us have the same truth maybe there's some different ones but everyone is living by their own truth and how people choose to defend that truth or live by that truth or grow in those truths or change those truths is that's their journey but how do you do it starting to pay attention to what your truth your belief systems are uh, mm. Second thing, start to look at the words that you speak. Mm. Get super aware because you're worth it and every word is a value. Yeah. Every word creates vibration. And from those words, when we say things like can't or impossible or hate or never or whatever, that all has a specific vibration. And that vibration, you stay in it consistently, it becomes your frequency. And uh, I really... I follow Andean shamanism, the, the medicine people of the Andes mountains, and I've been doing it for 23 years. And, you know, it's really interesting because their whole foundational belief system is based on this one word called Ainyi, A-Y-N-I. And Ainyi is sacred reciprocity. Mm. So they live their life knowing that if something is given, then something else needs to be received. Mm -hmm. And if they receive a thing, then they need to give something. And uh, they, they live their lives like that. And it's a pretty beautiful way to see how the systems in their communities and even their bodies work because of it, because they stay in that alignment. Mm -hmm. So you take a look at the words that you speak because all words carry vibration. Uh, then you pay attention to the actions that you take because your actions are based on your belief systems. So how do you live your life? How do you speak to yourself when you pass by your reflection in the mirror? Mm. How do you speak? Uh, how do you create suffering in your world? Yeah, That's a big one. That is one of the big things that cuts off intuition is suffering. Mm -hmm. We have told ourselves that we love to suffer. Mm. We love to suffer. We will suffer over things that we wouldn't hold anyone else in the same way by. And so you got to start looking at suffering, which will then lead you to, well, why do I suffer in this life? Well, I've had traumas. I'm not here to devalue anybody's experience no. of trauma. Like it's important to understand, but it's even more important to pay attention to your perception of trauma. Is trauma something that you've now conditioned yourself to believe the whole world owes you? Right. Is trauma something that happened where you feel like, it's so sad inside of you that you have to continue with the suffering mm. of depression mm. and you have to keep taking your um, prescription medications. Trauma 
is most all of our initiations. I've been around the world twice. I've never met someone who did not have some sort of trauma. Yeah. Maybe they weren't molested as a kid, but they went through something. And those somethings are given value by us, but the value that we give them is based on our conditions, right. what we make an agreement with. So what I'm hearing yes. <laughs> is we need to make sure that our value is in alignment. If we want to build our intuition, we need to make sure we value ourselves intrinsically. Absolutely. With anything. With any anything. With any change you want to make in your life, value is first. Value is first. Mm -hmm. So many people don't even know what their values are. They're like, what do you mean? Why do I need yeah. to know my values? Like I've had, I've walked patients through this and they're like, I don't understand the importance of this exercise mm -hmm. because it's showing you the things that you intuitively are drawn to. And I walk them through like a five page worksheet, Nice. you know, like it's just the way the world we live in, right? Okay, so value, mm -hmm. building that value, mm -hmm. and helping yourself. Let's see, where was it? What was the, your second presence? Part? Presence. Yeah, so working on your mindfulness, mm -hmm. and like bringing yourself back to here. Okay, like I'm getting really wound up. Can I feel my feet mm -hmm. on the ground? What's the smells in the room? Kind of orienting to our senses. I am here. Yep. I am here. Your senses are here to help you ground. Exactly. They're here to remind you. Okay, you're you're in this playing field right here. Mm -hmm. But also, you've got a lot more you're working with than just what's right here. This yes. is just to anchor you. This is just to help keep exactly. you grounded. To bring you back from. Mm -hmm. So someone is like, I had a I had a patient when I was a student who was a. Um, uh, what are they called when they like move to another place? Uh, a uh, refugee. Okay. And from the Rwandan genocide. Like, okay. She saw We're just horrible, talking about that. horrible shit. Mm -hmm. Her kid had behavioral issues, like severe behavioral issues. And she was like, no, I'm fine. Uh, well, your kid is experiencing what you experienced, even though he was born in a safe environment, he is expressing it in this way. Yeah. So like it was safe enough for him to, and she was young, she lost her. It was, it was, it's an awful thing, but she was okay. She built a life. She has a family. She had she, to like, keep moving. Yeah. She had to keep moving. And but like, at some point, eventually, yeah. all of those things will catch up to her. And at some point she'll have to face them. Or it's through her kid being sick, which is something I have seen multiple times where yep. it's like, and we've seen this, there's data that shows this with the um, Jewish family members that went through World War II and then moved to, moved to another country and built another life. And it's like, they were fine, quote unquote, mm -hmm. but then the next ge couple generations were like, uh, kind of vibrating with this like stressed experience of like, we went through something awful. Yeah, and you gotta get it out. Yeah. That's the, <sighs> it's so important to get out the feeling that comes. We're taught to devalue our feelings. Definitely. We're taught not to feel a certain way. Take a pill. We're taught this. We're conditioned to this. Hold it in. Mm -hmm. And where does it go? It goes into one of our organs, typically mm -hmm. our stomach, and then, which is our orientation of processing emotions. <laughs> And then begins to putrefy and then mm -hmm. begins to become toxic and then starts to break down and then our yeah. whole bodies don't feel good and we wonder why we feel sick. Yeah. Or we wonder why this, um, we're getting this, this diagnosis. Right. It's, uh, it's really interesting too when you first start working with somebody and they tell you like, I don't dream. Dreams and feelings are really tied into each other. Mm. So like if I meet someone and they say, oh, I don't dream. I say, well, how, when was the last time you can remember you had a dream? Oh, I haven't dreamt since I was a kid. I haven't dreamt since. Mm. And I say, okay. I said, um, so what's going on in your life? I, I'm, you know, I'm depressed. I'm numb. Mm. So as an indicator, as they're doing their work and as progress is happening, happy 11, 11. One of the things that I look forward to is when they start to dream again, mm -hmm. because when they start dreaming again, that means that their intuition is kicking in again. Yeah. We, we never lost it. You know, we, people say, well, I lost my intuition. I went through this horrible something happened to me and I lost. We never lose it. We might mm -hmm. put our awareness on something else. Mm -hmm. but we don't lose it. Yeah. It's always within us. And what I really love visual representations and you mm -hmm. talked about changing our value, changing things, changing the words that we see, speak. And I would say podcasts, books you read, news you watch, hopefully mm -hmm. you turn it off. Music. Music, all mm -hmm. of these things we're bringing into our environment and they affect us. Absolutely. So um, would, would you bring up the stick person? Just I want to show this, like if we are in our experience, experiencing, you know, that, that we're watching the news. That's the most palpable one for most people. Yeah. We're feeling stressed out about all the things going on in the world that are and way the out of And the highs and lows. They'll give you oh, two my. sad stories and one good story. Yeah. So they, you know, 
You're like this. Yep. And so your brain chemicals are like this. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we are not masters of our reality. We're kind of like on this. Ah, we're distracted. We're distracted. So mm -hmm. when we have these things in our conscious mind, then they, they turn into feelings, which mm -hmm. is our unconscious mind, where mm -hmm. intuition is actually, where intuition lives. This is our emotional mind. Okay, well, I don't want to feel this way because that's a, that's a weird or discomfort, discomforting feeling. So I'm not going to feel that way. So I'm going to suppress it. But then you talked about having your thoughts become actions. Mm -hmm. So the person that wants to quit smoking, they need to value themselves enough to say, hey, I no longer want to smoke this mm -hmm. cigarette. And they also need to be given uh, better coping mechanisms. Yes. Because usually they create a, a relationship. emotional thing right. with cigarette smokers. They get breaks. It's a relationship. Breath. Oh, 100%. You, you cigarette smokers like... You're in a relationship. You have a, that cigarette is your girlfriend or your boyfriend, like yep. or whatever you're into. Yep. But that's that is your relationship. And getting them to see, well, when did you start going out? Oh, when I was 13, and my exactly. dad yelled at me. Or yep. it was what the cool kids were doing, or whatever it was. And so then here comes your value system. You know, you just said, what did you just say? You said it, and I was like, oh man, I want to, I want to catch that real quick. It'll come back. Just let's keep going. So thoughts become feelings. Feelings <gasps> become actions. And actions become what we are doing, what we're vibrating out into the world. Yes. Are you watching the news and then you're circulating into this fear and these are the results you're getting, which is like nothing special, mm -hmm. nothing to be excited about. You want to change your life? Turn off the news. Uh -huh. Turn off your TV. Yeah. It's literally called tell a vision programming. <laughs> it's called, it, it's they telling tell you, you what it is. <laughs> there, nobody's hiding this. It's tell a vision. Television programming. Oh, man. You were being, you, that's being how it programmed. works. So you were saying about feelings, mm -hmm. that the feeling emotions. So your emotions are the byproduct of your perception about something. Uh -huh. When you write a story about an experience that happened, I, I really love hermeticism because it's like eight, eight of these like wisdoms. And the first wisdom of hermeticism says all is mind. Oh. Everything that you go through is your translation. Everything that's happened, you're translating this. You're translating whether this person is nice or this person is not nice. You're translating if this situation was a bad thing or a good thing. If you train yourself to see everything that's happening is good for my refinement. It's good for me becoming stronger. If you train yourself in that, and that's, you were talking about, you know, muscle training, that's what, that's what your spiritual walk is as well. Yeah. Regardless of your path, whether you want to be a Christian or a witch or a Christian witch or a Buddhist or any other path or spirituality, if you, all of those paths will take you back to hearing yourself. Definitely. They'll all take you back to love. <laughs> That's what I love about studying religions around the world, oh, different philosophies, both, because they come to the same conclusions at the end of it. It doesn't matter what flavor, it's just where you are Different culturally. names, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, like when you actually like reduce it down to like the essence of mm -hmm. the thing. And like, yeah, we can get caught up in like the goobly gop of like man-made shenanigans. But like, <laughs> that's not what's important is when you can take that bird's eye view, that objective perspective and say, what is this actually mm -hmm. showing me? The lens that we're looking through, like you talked about that person that, you know, we're all seeing it through our individual lenses. Mm -hmm. And so how you're seeing it mm -hmm. from that perception is where the emotion will come up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so... Part of my story was I had a lot of negative, pessimistic things in my brain when I was growing up. Okay. And the way I changed it, I did affirmations because I found, found Louise Hay's work. Yeah. I put affirmations fucking everywhere. <laughs> yeah. On my light switch, it's on my mirror, on my, on my binders, because this was before smartphones were like on everything. Yeah. Everywhere in my house. My roommates were like, you're crazy. That's okay. I don't care. You were changing the vibration. I had to change what was going in my thoughts mm -hmm. so that I could change my emotional feelings. Mm -hmm. People have a very hard time doing something like this. And this is not the only way. There's lots of ways to do it. Mm -hmm. Turn off the news. Change the things you're listening to. Get new friends if that's what needs to be done. If you're around a bunch of heroin people, maybe that's why you're using heroin still. Like, you know, just, you know, and I know 9 out of 10 people that use heroin. Like, I know it's a complicated thing and we're reducing it. And it's a story. Be a miracle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, a story. story. And it's, that's not to say that it doesn't matter. Think about this part, right? We'll say it doesn't matter. We... Oh, well, I'm thinking about this, but it doesn't matter. Or you can say it doesn't matter. But really, if you think about the word matter, here we go. Well, <laughs> I sit around a lot of medicine fires. I really enjoy what I do, Shana. Thanks mm -hmm. for having this. Yeah. So it doesn't matter 
What is matter? Matter is a value that we put on something. Matter is also what's produced in this dimension, this world. So if something doesn't matter, but you're literally saying it doesn't matter, <laughs> then it matters. Yeah. And matter and materialize both come from the same root. So what does or doesn't matter, the universe doesn't distinguish a doesn't or a no. The universe just sees matter, and so it begins to inform. Right. Yep. So the negative, so things need to be framed in a positive way. I am sure. love rather than... Even if you feel stupid saying it. Right. That's fine. You're, you're worth it. Just keep going. One more, foot in front of the other. The more you say it, the more comfortable. And man, the first time I said it in the mirror, I did not feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you know what? One of the things that's changed, because this was years ago that I did this, is I can receive compliments. I can give compliments. I can get gifts. I can get things given to me. And also, you before we turned on, people that would call you when they're having a meltdown, mm -hmm. they feel like a burden. Uh -huh. They don't value themselves. I don't They've been told that they don't matter enough to come to someone with a problem. Mm -hmm. They totally matter. They That's why 100%. we all have a solar plexus. Yeah. Solar plexus, a sun plexus, a plexus of nerves, right? So our solar plexus, remember Care Bears? Mm -hmm. Remember the cartoon, the Care Bears? Oh, yeah. So the Care Bears, where did they shine their magic, Care Bear magic from? <laughs> right out the solar plexus. Look how magical that is. We're all little Care Bears. We're just on this really great journey remembering that we have the power of the Care Bear the or the sun or whatever we want to, divine, whatever we want to call it. But yeah. the, it's, we all, all have it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, uh, what I was saying when we used to give those confirmations or those affirmations for people, when they got to the phrase, I am beautiful, mm. that's when they would start to cry. Mm. I am beautiful. They get there and it, I am be, 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 and it's like beautiful. And they'd say it and they'd say it with their eyes closed. They'd say it. <laughs> And then at some point, they would say it looking themselves in their reflection in the mirror. And, yeah. and that's when you knew, like, things were breaking open, yeah. old shells, so growing old stuff. Yeah. To see that, like, because so, they're doing the work. We get the privilege of watching someone yes. evolve. We get the privilege of offering a yes. seed. Here's the seed. And you make with it what you want. Yep. And it's beautiful to see. And, you know, I don't have nearly as much experience as you, but I've walked in this world and I've been, I've, I've heard some crazy You're things on from people. You're on your journey too. 100%. And, you know, I can't wait to, to continue to see these stories and have more to share about, like, the miracles of the world. Yeah. Because I have felt like a naive person for thinking that miracles exist. And wait, then, wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Say that again? Because I'm so, I grew up in the like science brain, logic world, but okay. that's not how it is in science. But medicine says it's an incurable disease, dis-ease. Yes. One of the things my mentor, one of my mentors, Dr. Zeff used to say, every person is cure. Every disease is curable. Mm -hmm. Not every pure person is curable. And what he is speaking to mm -hmm. is, can you change your thoughts? Can you change your emotions? Can you tune into your intuition? Can you change your actions and your environment around right. you? And not everybody believes they can. Well, there people has to going, be a belief. People going through an experience of illness and disease, especially when it's their possession. Yeah. This is my cancer. This is my fibromyalgia. This is my whatever it I is. I own it. Yeah. So you don't want it, don't own it. Yeah. Don't want it, don't own it. Don't call it yours. I totally neutralize it. My favorite you. are when patients come to see me and they're like, yeah, my doctor told me. Nah, nah, nah. I don't <laughs> believe it. I'm like, excellent. That is a great place to start. One of the things, and I know we've talked about this before, is listen to what they say, but don't actually hear what they're mm -hmm. saying. Don't take it into your psyche. Well, understand that anybody that you ever get advice from, mm -hmm. whether it is a palm reader, whether it is a soothsayer, whether it's a person that walks the red road, whether it's a doctor, whether it is a whoever it is, you have to remember Actually, I don't want to tell you you have to. You're grown. You make your own choice. <laughs> it's really helpful to remember that that person is giving you advice based on what they see, intuit, feel, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They're giving you advice based on their value system and also the conditions that they live by in their own lives. Yep. So... It's great to get a second opinion. It's great to have guidance. If I was going to learn how to, you know, fly a helicopter, I'm not just going to hop in a helicopter and be like, what Intuit do I do? Like, Intuition. help me. <laughs> I would 
Go find the best helicopter pilot and say, I would like to get some training here. <laughs> That's the same thing that we're going through right now. Yeah. And so, so when someone gives you advice, that's mm -hmm. great. Hear it if it feels good. This is the importance of intuition. Your intuition will tell you this person feels right. That advice feels right. What they're seeing feels right. Mm -hmm. But also know that the reader, the person who's going to read for you, is also going to only see based on how they live their lives, based on their value system. Right. So you find people who choose to live by their heart's alignment. They choose to live inspired in love, all that good stuff. Take what resonates. Mm -hmm. Take what Absolutely. resonates. That's what's important. We all have that opportunity for our own selves. Absolutely. If this resonates with you, fantastic. If it doesn't, turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. You said it, Shana. Um, so this has been great, Tia. Thank you yeah, so much for joining you. me today to talk about intuition, this intangible but very <laughs> present it's so good. aspect of human existence. That is. Um, so I just kind of want to give a little summary. We talked about what intuition is, and we talked about the like a little bit of science behind intuition mm -hmm. with the vagus nerve part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about you know connecting to ourselves through our feelings, and you know how feelings are interesting in the United States of good old America. <laughs> and so tuning back into our own selves and trusting ourselves. We also talked about the environment and how our environment plays a role into what we're thinking, how we're feeling, our emotional state. There are things that we can change. We cannot change everything in the world, but we can start changing the things around ourselves. Sure. Change and the inside. Change the inside. You're the exactly. source. Mm -hmm. if, if you're, if you go eat at a restaurant, you excuse yourself, you go to the bathroom afterwards, you're standing in front of the sink, washing your hands and you do that quick thing where we yep. we look we check that thing and see if it's in our teeth if you have lettuce in your teeth do you scratch at the mirror to get the lettuce out what do you do you go right there you go to the source that's like anything yeah yep. so this has been really great thank you um where can my guests find you if they want to connect with you first? Let's see. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Sewing Fire Tribe. S O W I N G Fire Tribe. And I'll make sure to connect that in the show notes. Thank and you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank our you. next our next guest is Dr. Ryan Phillips and we'll be having a longer discussion on psychedelics and how that Yay. can impact us and change our mental emotional states and you know crack us open to the universal consciousness if you will. Um, so until next time thank you so much. Thank you.